Mr. Boyer, it's a pleasure for us uh, to be back here at the biennial Harvard AMD conference. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the work that went into planning this particular event and some of the highlights that you believe are important. Uh, well, again, first I want to thank you for being here and for supporting us and covering what I think is an important meeting. Uh, the, this meeting is different from most other AMD meetings in that it has very little direct discussion of clinical aspects. Like we really don't talk about treatment and we don't talk a ton about diagnosis except as it relates to more cutting edge biomarkers. Um, we're really more about getting both clinicians and basic scientists together to talk about pathogenic me mechanisms, which we think we need to understand if we're going to have a treatment, either the next generation beyond VEGF or anything at all for dry AMD. So, uh, and then this meeting in particular is different in that we have a lot of discussion built in. So people get to hear a couple of talks from very good people, I think, and then try to synthesize those or discuss as part of a larger group concepts that it's brought up. And then the third thing, which I really like, is bringing in people from outside of eye research. So this morning we had a really interesting session on aging and from three different perspectives. Somebody who was uh, you know, talking about um, uh, splicing, somebody else talking about cellular senescence, somebody else talking about um, you know, calorie restriction. It was really interesting and uh, I think it's something that we who work in AMD, even though age is in the title of the disease, we don't think about what that means in terms of mechanism. We know the correlation is there, we don't think about the mechanism. So I think it's, you know, a, the idea is to get people thinking about different variables and, you know, maybe even starting collaborations tomorrow there's a lipid session, and again, we have a couple of people from outside eye research who think about lipids and pathology. So, you know, for those reasons, I think it's, you know, really interesting. And, you know, bringing in the aging, it's not something that you see at many AMD meetings. And there's a huge literature and a huge biology outside of people working in the eye talking and working on aging. So I think it was about time we had it in this meeting. Yeah, it was very refreshing, and as, yeah. as you say, an extraordinary cross-pollination of ideas yeah. and concepts. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. In fact, it was interesting, though. Somebody said to me, one person said to me, I won't say who was, said to me, it was a really interesting session, but I don't see what it has to do with AMD. And I wow. said, well, you know, maybe the direct connection is not evident, but the disease is an age-related disease, so it has to be in there someplace. We that's just have to figure out where. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I applaud you for organizing Oh, okay, this great. Well, it's been fun. A little selfish because it's. I like to hear pe from people from outside, you know, the eye and right. what they're doing, and you don't often have time to get the expert. So yeah. it sort of serves many purposes. Uh, so it's great. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing currently. What's exciting in your world? Uh, well, my lab is. Uh, I'm doing a lot of collaborative work now. I'm the director of research here, so I have less time to be directing my own research. Right. Ironically. Um, so I'm doing uh, a lot of collaborative work now, and uh, I'm very interested, again, this is why this meeting works for me, is uh, we're very interested in the potential role of lipids in the pathogenesis of AMD. And in fact, this morning I didn't actually, I had a couple of slides to get the discussion going. Turns out I didn't need to have those slides because this group discusses enough, but the three diseases that I um, we're making the case a very similar, and people have made these correlations, AMD, Alzheimer's, and atherosclerosis have a lot of similarities. Um, and I think investigating those similarities is a potentially very valuable angle. People do that at a superficial level. But one ir thing that they do have in common is they all have lipid um, associations, both in terms of hyperlipidemia being a risk factor, but also in terms of genetic um, sort of clues that polymorphisms and lipid handling genes are all present a risk factor. Sure. Like the APOE is one of the biggest risk factors for Alzheimer's. We certainly know that for um, uh, atherosclerosis, right. just because we know statins work. And then for AMD, they've gotten less press than the complement polymorphisms, but several 
lipid related genes are also associated with increased risk for so I think that's a, a direction to go and we're interested in that we published a paper recently showing that um, uh, if you treat pigment epithelial cells which we all know is very likely the the primary target or the begin where the disease is instigated with native lipids they're untouched but if you treat them with oxidized lipids which is what happens when you have an excess of lipids they'll stay in an area and become oxidized it's toxic for them and then we've gone on to show that that's mediated by the inflammasome which is a interesting area now of investigation because it's a mechanism for initiating and then amplifying a local immune response so we're working in that area and it's pretty exciting and we're not the only ones other people are working on inflammasome uh, re relations uh, the impact in uh, AMD and then I should say also there's a literature in Alzheimer's and atherosclerosis about the inflammasome so another another parallel right. yeah I think it's fascinating how all of these pieces are coming together. Yeah. Uh, that eventually we might have a, not a general theory of relativity, but a general theory of pathogenesis. Yeah. And then where all the pieces come together. Yeah. So tell us about some of the next steps for your research as people that you're working with. Um, well, I think, you know, in terms of, uh, we're pretty focused on understanding dry AMD right now, so geographic atrophy, so understanding what, what are the uh, insults, if you will, that target the RPE? What are the mechanisms of cell death? And then how could you interfere with them? So for instance, tomorrow, to go back to the lipid story, Demetrius Vavis is going to talk about a really early study that they've done, putting patients with Drusen on very high dose statins. Very similar to what was done in atherosclerosis years ago. It was shown that if you put people on very high dose statins, you could regress atherosclerotic plaques and he's done that in a small group of people I think it's like 20 people and shown that the drusen goes away now it's a very well but it's a preliminary study because there's no evidence yet of effect on visual acuity because it was short term sure. so that's the his next step and that sort of plays into a little bit what we're doing because they're trying to lower the lipids and we're showing that if you have too many lipids around right. you have the potential for accumulating effectively toxins for RPE cells. Right. Another way people are going is thinking about maybe blocking the inflammasome itself. Right. You know, no treatments generally are without some kind of a potential side effect and inflammasomes also do good things. They're the body's mechanism for dealing with sterile infections or our sterile danger. So, you know, would that have a downside? We don't really know. But it's an area that we and other people are interested in. So we're looking at uh, RPE damage and then we're also now trying to investigate other potential ways to protect RPE cells you know go upstream even of of uh, you know the inflammasome maybe outside the cell so we're working in that direction on things that might be sort of neuroprotective or protect sure. them against oxidation and those would be interesting because if you could blunt sort of oxidative damage, it might be something you could actually take systemically without worrying about it. Yeah. So that, that would be nice. Very exciting. Yeah. So, uh, what about the component of autoimmunity and antibodies in the inflammasome? Um, well, I mean, the, the inflammasome is really innate immunity. So in that case, you basically have presented the cell either externally or internally with something that the cell perceives to be a dangerous signal. And in this case, it's... Uh, it's internal, right? Where, where, what we're thinking happens is the oxidized LDL gets taken out by the cell and accumulates because it, for a variety of reasons, doesn't get exported or handled properly. And then our data so far show that what happens is the lysosomes of the cell where the uh, oxidized LDL sit burst, right. break, and then that starts a cascade that leads to inflammasome activation, right. cell death is part of it, and then release of IL-1 beta. So right. you're killing the cell, and then you're releasing IL-1 beta, which is going to bring in right. all of the other inflammatory cells. Right. So it's like at the, it's starting an entire cascade. Right. Right. So right now, I don't think there's any, we don't have, we don't think that there's a role, I haven't shown any role for antibodies in that, because it's more the innate sure. immune system. Sure. But it is, 
people have shown in tissue culture systems, at least, you know, amyloids and uh, oxidized lipids and lipofusin, all the things that we think about in actually isolated drusen, those can all activate the inflammasome. Right. So that's a, a when I went, meetings I've been to, the International Eye Research Meeting a couple of weeks ago, a lot of interest in the inflammasome. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you, Professor, for oh. giving us such a wonderful and lively exposition <laughs> okay. of the uh, incredible emerging work, All right. both yours and your colleagues. Oh, thanks. And thanks for your continued interest and support of the meeting. It means uh, it's, you can see it's, we have great attendance and a lot of lively discussion, so I think it serves it's a good purpose. Thank you. Again. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.